Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. I'm Peter Martin. Delighted to have your company on the programme today. Tom McManus, Darren Jackson and Alan Ruff are here with me. We'll be uh, taking quite a few of your messages uh, and discussing them as well. If you want to give us your thoughts on the weekend's games in the Scottish Premiership. And there's a few tasty ones to get our teeth into. As well as, of course, looking at the start of the Championship tonight as well. You probably witnessed... Gabriel out there at Celtic Park. He'll be with me, Ruffy and Darren tomorrow out there at Celtic Park from 11 o'clock. We'll do a special old firm preview game. Hopefully you can join us for that and we'll give you post-match reaction as well. So a little added bonus at the weekend. We're just doing that because obviously we want to try and beat the figures on Hibs TV, Ruffy. That's the only reason we're doing it. We're just, we just want to blow them right out of the water. Is that fair? It's a big ask. Yeah, well, well obviously if you're doing it, if you're doing that kind of show, you have to be there uh, at the show. I don't know where. No hips are. <laughs> TV are the night. I don't know what they're, what they're doing. You know, probably if you're a wee cupboard in the Easter Road somewhere, just to no, find no. out. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Don't, don't knock don't knock him's TV Ruffy that could be where we're going next yeah. anyway um, apart, apart from anything else um, lots to look forward to and of course it's a, a small matter of Celtic against Rangers tomorrow uh, so we'll be looking ahead to that and we'll also be giving you uh, the lowdown on Dundee United Aberdeen Hamilton St Johnston Livingston against Kelly, of course St Mirren against Motherwell and Ross County uh, against Hibs Tam will be up there um, in the afternoon uh, on Hibs TV for that one at Dingwall. So, uh, lots to look forward to. Give us your thoughts on the game that everyone's talking about, Celtic against Rangers. Um, who do you think is going to win? Could we uh, be building it up too much? Is it going to fall flat as a pancake and end up a nil-nil draw? Or will it be a goal fest as Mark McGee suggested on last night's programme? Um, all these things are what we're going to discuss but first of all to set the scene here's a reporter out there at Celtic Park for us Gabriel Antoniazzi. Good afternoon from outside Celtic Park where tomorrow the first Old Firm match of the season will take place. It's the first time these two sides have met since December 2019 where Rangers ran out 2-1 winners here and appeared to seize the title initiative. However we all know what happened Celtic came back from Dubai stronger and were top when the season prematurely ended in March. Hoops boss Neil Lennon understands the scale of the game more than most and he's keen to avenge last year's result. Obviously we're playing a team we are a point above us so it's important we um, try and keep that winning run going. We play well, we play strong. You know, it's no quarter given in these games and um, you know, we've not been overly pleased with the way we played in the last, last game at Celtic Park so we want to put that right. So Rangers are currently top of the league by a point, although they have played a game more than Celtic. Jer's boss, Stephen Gerrard, is very keen to emulate last year's result. He knows they must find their top level again if they're going to do so. It's been a very unique preparation going into an old firm. Not much time on the training pitch and players arriving late. Um, we want the players to go to Celtic Park with belief and confidence, but we certainly won't be going there over confidence just on the back of last year. We know it's going to be a very tough challenge and we need to find uh, a real top-level performance if, if, if we've got any hopes of taking uh, the three points from there. In terms of team news, Celtic await the availability of Ryan Christian Odson Edward, both with COVID-related issues. It's understood if they can play, it will be from the bench. For the Jers, what do they do with the midfield conundrum? Scott Arfield's been their most informed player recently, but he could be pushed out wide in favour of Ryan Jack. And could Alfred Morelos finally break his old firm goal scoring duck? All of this and much more live at 12.30. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll be there. Uh, 11 uh, on the dot, we'll be live from Celtic Park uh, and we'll bring you the build-up to that game. And then afterwards, uh, we'll be there getting reaction from the managers and the players as well. Hi to Alison, hi to Shane. Um, there's uh, people from all across the world, even Moni Feith listening to us and watching us on the programme. Delighted to have your company. Uh, lots of people. Uh, Willie Gibson, good to see you, Willie. Willie Morton. 
Martin as well, who doesn't really have an opinion. He's just posted uh, about eight or nine Union Jacks. And I think that's possibly the way the programme is going to go today. There will be four Leaf Clovers, Union Jacks, and a few people saying Celtic will win, somebody won't win. Uh, looking forward to the build-up tomorrow, says Marion Christie. Thank you, Marion. Um, it's got to be better than Sky, says Marion. Uh, well, listen, uh, there's room for everybody. I always say, uh, as long as there's jobs for everybody as well, um, and uh, our compadres and Sky and BBC and Radio Clyde, they'll all be uh, covering this and uh, giving it the, the necessary hype, including, of course, as I like to mention, the necessary hype for the other matches as well, which we will discuss today. Uh, well, we talked there about um, the big build-up and the managers trying to build this up. One of the things that's a key issue, Ruffy, is... Um, First of all, you're looking a little bit blurry, Ruffy, which I'm worried about with your internet. That's the uh, the cleaner's hoover is clearly affecting your Wi-Fi there. Um, <laughs> but uh, the one thing I'm really worried about, Ruffy, is, you know, we always try and second-guess picking the teams. But, uh, you know, uh, Neil Lennon's not too happy. He's watching the Kieran Tierney situation very closely to see if he plays for Arsenal. Ryan Christie should be available for Celtic. Yeah, I think Neil Lennon, uh, the both managers, uh, he's got the the most problems to deal with, obviously, with the player situation, obviously, the striker, we don't 100% know if he's going to start the game or not, he, he's a big, big player in these games, so it's team selection for me, uh, I'd be interested once the teams are announced and we get a definitive of who's actually on the park, I think we'll get a better idea, but I think deep down Rangers will be confident in going to Parkhead, they're on a good run of forum, not losing that many goals, so... I, I think the the crowd as well uh, will affect the game as well. I think uh, that stadium full with Celtic supporters is a massive boost. Of, if you're on the park, you're playing well, obviously, and if you're winning. Uh, so for me, it's let me see the team lines, you know, and I'd be more confident in making a prediction. Well, um, listen, we're all going to disagree on this programme, so we may as well get the boot in right away. Um, I, I don't think the, the crowd will make one iota of difference on this, Tam, because quite simply, uh, you're either good enough to win the game or you're not. Whether there's a crowd there or not, they're professional footballers at the highest level. Listen, I think you're maybe down the answer me and me has obviously played no firm games, but I, I think it will, Peter. I, I don't agree. I think it will make a difference. I think Celtic not having their fans behind them Gives, gives, gives it Rangers an edge, and I think it would be the same if it was Ibrox. I think having 50, 55,000 fans behind you, you know, screaming you on, urging you on, you know, supporting you, you know, intimidating, intimidating the referee as well. Let's not forget, you know, referees are human. You know, if there's 60,000 people shouting for a decision, sometimes they can be swayed by it. So, no, I, I don't agree. I think, I think, and Darn will answer, answer it more than me. I think, I think it will make a difference tomorrow, no crowd. Well, it didn't make a difference over the last couple of years, Darren, because there was 15, 60,000 in on a number of these games, and the best team usually uh, has won the game. Um, I was normally running up and down the touchline, so it didn't really affect me. <laughs> 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 um, listen, Peter, it, it can go either way. I've, I've always said when you're playing for Celtic or Rangers, when you've got 60,000 and 50,000 behind you, it's unbelievable. But when things aren't going well, can you handle it? So last year, Rangers winning the game. You can imagine the Celtic supporters getting on the, the players' back and can the players handle it? So it does make a difference, the crowd being there. But tomorrow, they just need to get on with it. It's, uh, I, are we going to get a good spectacle? I hope we do. I think it's hard with no crowd there, but old firm games mean so much. And um, the players will 100% be up for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're you're one hundred percent correct. You know, listen. If, uh, if 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 Celtic um, if Celtic were to win the game uh, uh, without any fans there, um, is that because they somehow managed to overcome the fact there was no fans there? Um, I know when the two teams are on a level pegging, it's very difficult to predict, and that's why at the end of this this program we will predict. I'm going to read out Alec Kelly. Alec's a big Rangers fan, always likes to offer us his opinion. We sometimes read out um, some of the opinions because it's always a great noise up when you get Celtic and Rangers going together. And Alec says it could be a tough.
tough game uh, 4-0 Rangers um, so uh, that's the way <laughs> every opinion is valued I, I want you to I want you to give us your thoughts um, Kent will be in Duffy's back pocket um, says Jordan Hutton there's all sorts of uh, suggestions on this uh, of course we did mention that some players uh, we're awaiting to see the selection uh, from the managers on this uh, Neil Lennon was first to point out uh, the Ryan Christie situation they'll be watching and monitoring what's happening with Kieran Tierney if he can if he gets the all clear to play for Arsenal Neil Lennon will be on his high horse wanting his man available they followed they felt they followed the procedures properly um, self you know not self isolate and social distancing you know didn't come in the contact um, and he's probably guilty by association but like I said he's negative and has been for the last week 10 days so we've got a you know fit and able player you know not being allowed to play which we find if the, if this scenario pans out that Kieran can play we find that very confusing mm. yeah uh, it's, a, it's a big call Tom yeah I, just, I, I think they'll be watching that closely I think if Tierney's allowed to play for Arsenal um, and gets it all clear. I think Celtic will be urging, you know, the government or whoever's in charge that they, you know, the Christie can play. I don't think there's any difference whatsoever. If he's proven negative, he's tested negative over the last couple of days, right up until the game. You know, he probably gets tested again today, negative. And why can he not play tomorrow? And Christie's a massive player for Celtic. He'll probably start the game. You know, it's not as if it's a squad player. I think Christie would play. So uh, it's a big call. It's a big call. And hopefully, you know, if if, if Tierney gets the all clear, then, then Christie does. Because I don't think it'd be fair. Uh, one rule for one, one for the other, to be honest. Yeah, um, quite a lot of people, and I'm quite happy to take it on the chin on this and, and emphasise the point that I'm making. Uh, I'm not dismissing the fact that crowds do make a difference. The adrenaline for the players, um, the players that can't hack it when they're getting on their back, teams that are not playing well and the fans start to get angry. I am not dismissing the fact that a crowd can make a difference. But this is a level playing field with two teams now going at it with no fans as they have been for a considerable amount of time. So they just have to get down to it. And it's down to the two, the two uh, sets of players going at it head to head. And the best team will win. Some mediocre teams have been lifted uh, by the fans in games to levels that we've never witnessed before. And they somehow win a game, Ruffy. But this is a level playing field. And, and there's no point in talking about the fans. I'm not dismissing what Chan McManus is saying. I think it, Darren's mentioned it as well, Ruffy. Fans do make a difference and can lift players and, and can have a negative effect they on them. They can sway referees, Peter. But, uh, well, they can, but that's gone now. That's, that is, that is no. gone. We are, now, we are now looking at two teams and saying, there's no fans, you know the conditions, you've been playing in it for quite a while. It's down to the two teams on the park for me, Ruffy. Yeah, I think we'd all agree with that. I think the point, that, well, I don't know what Tam's point, uh, Tam's point is the referees can be swayed. My, my point is, if I'm playing for Celtic and I go one nothing up and I've got 50,000 supporters behind me, I'm going to feel happy about that. I don't think the opposition would be. And the same with Rangers. If I'm playing for Rangers and I go one up and I've got their support behind me, it gives you an added bonus. That, that's all I'm saying. But you won't get that tomorrow because... There's no fans in the stadium at all. But you're correct in what you're saying. The players will just have to deal with the situation. I mean, you've been to some games. I've been to some games. Tam's been to games. It's an eerie, it's an eerie atmosphere just sitting watching it. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like actually playing in it. You know, I really can't because I've never done it before. But sitting watching it, it's strange, really strange. Yeah, Tam Black has said, of course the fans matter. What a comment. Again, I would emphasise to you, there are no fans in. There is no point in talking about fans and what effect it will have on the game. There hasn't been a fan inside the ground since March. So this whole nonsense about it, it's down to the two teams that we're analysing. There's no point in analysing the 12th man. He ain't there. Uh, I totally get the point. I'm not dismissing the fact that fans make a difference. I'm dismissing the fact that it's suddenly makes one team potentially weaker than the other because this is the great debate we're about to have on it because you guys are going to have to give us your prediction shortly we've all had a, a, a wee stab at it um, but we're certainly going to have a look at it um, El Yanusi, will he play? Is he going to get a start? Is he going to come off the bench? He certainly wants to be involved he says it's uh, one of the biggest derbies in the world uh, Everyone knows 
the old firm, you know, one of the you know biggest games in the world. Uh, so, uh, so it is a big game, and uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, last time I, I played, uh, I played with a, almost a broken toe, and for just for four, four or five minutes. Uh, but I mean, I'm looking forward to it as everyone has. Uh, it's a huge game. Uh, you know, three points. That's all it matters. Okay, he's got it fairly fair and square. We're going to be listening to uh, what the Rangers camp has to say in a moment. But uh, the last one is all speculation, Darren, which is have a look at uh, Gabriel has uh, put the team together, potentially that could take to the field for Celtic. Have a look and uh, see what you think of our potential lineup here. Duffy, Julian, I, I think Duffy will be in the centre of that three. Um, Frimpong, Brown, McGregor, Laxal, and Cham. A Yeti and El Yanusi. What do you make of that, Darren? Well, Peter, we're, we're talking about, yeah, that could be the team. But if Edward and Christy are fit, they both play. Guaranteed. From the start? Both, yeah, from the start, yeah. I think if, if they, they come back and they feel okay... I would agree with Darren. I think, I think they, they, they will play them because there's no use keeping them on the bench. Go and play them and see how long they'll, go and see how long they'll last. But that could be the team. A jetty has just uh, just started training, so you don't know what he'll be like. Is, is he looking at Lee Griffiths just now as maybe an impact player that his fitness isn't good enough, and he comes on and gives you that spark? Um, and then Klamala, who I don't know if he if he's got a lot a lot of confidence in him, but he's the fittest one just now that could cause problems with his energy and his pace and he scored a great goal up at St Johnston. But for me, if Christy, if Christy gets the call, Christy plays. And yeah, well. okay. Uh I'll disagree with you there on that point, but not not because obviously, um, Tam. I know you agree with him on it, but uh, the manager has mentioned today that if he that, that if he is available, he'll get a place on the bench. Um, now I'm not blowing Darren out of the water on that. You know, he might change his mind, but I think Lenny, see it as Peter, do you think Lenny's going to tell you tell you his team on? No, no, I, I, I don't, which is why I countered it by obviously saying I'm not blowing your, your thing out of the water because managers change. Uh, if there was a choice between Christie and Edouard as a chance, I, I, I think he'll play Edouard as a starter. Uh, well, listen, I think you're right because he's got El Yunusi there. I, I, would, I would go with you there. If, if, the, if it's one or the two, I'd go with Edouard. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the big dilemma. So, I think they'll both play. Yeah, so that's the potential um, uh, lineup as far as uh, Rangers are concerned. Well, I, I, I think it's fairly obvious. Billy Hutchison says it's going to be easy street for Rangers. Um, lots of people, um, <coughs> uh, you know, have got their opinion on it, and I'll try and read out as many of them as possible. I suggest to you now, Ruffy, that this is indeed a Rangers side that I think are well equipped. Um, to go to Celtic Park uh, and win this one. There's a real feel-good factor, momentum building uh, around this Rangers team. Well, there's definitely a feel-good factor uh, because we're not talking about uh, what players they've got are injured or, or who's not going to make the game or whatever. So from the Rangers camp, uh, they'll be happy with what they've got. They've still got to go there and win. You know, we, we know they've been impressive in the European scene. You know, the form in the SPFL for me is, as I've said all along, I think that there are no challenges in this league apart unless you play Hibs and Aberdeen. The other games that Rangers have won and won convincingly and not lost any goals uh, is against weak opposition. You know, this is a different opposition they're up against. It's a better side than anything they've played in the SPFL. So it, it's good. And both teams will have to be up for it. There's no doubt about that. But... I don't know if Dan would agree with me. I, I just think when you come to these games, you look at big players and you look at the big players and you look at games that turn, get players that turn the game, like Ryan Kent, you know, can turn the game. McGregor can turn the game. And players like that, you know. So on the day, you don't really know what's going to happen until you turn up. And, and that's why I'm saying it's a big game for big players and whichever big players turn up generally win the game. Yeah, uh, John Cusick is saying, you're not mentioning the ref. Calm, calm down, John. We're getting to the referee. Um, we're talking about the players first and foremost, uh, and then we'll talk about the referee. And uh, we won't be talking about the referee in any sense of swaying one way or the other. We'll analyse his qualities 
for this game. Um, so there's no Roof, there's no Aribo, there's no Zungu. Um, and this is a side, um, Tam, that uh, I had a look at the, the, the Rangers team uh, and the one that near enough finished, nine of the players uh, that um, started for Rangers and defeated Celtic by two goals to one at Celtic Park, nine of them are, are reckoned to start in this game. Yeah, listen, I've got great memories, obviously, the last time that they went to Parkhead and won just before the winter break. Um, I thought they thoroughly deserved to win the game. Um, they went to Celtic Park and were confident and, uh, and, and deservedly picked up three points. Obviously, coming back from Dubai, they, they the nightmare and Celtic got stronger. Um, but I think they'll, listen, Rangers will go with confidence. You know, I'm speaking to, you know, a lot of my friends are Rangers supporters and there's a real confidence about them that they can go um, they can go to Celtic and win the game because I think Rangers away from home, even in European games, um, have shown their quality when teams come on to them. But at the other end of that, I think Rangers are playing the best side that they've played this season. And, you know, I was at Easter Road and Hibs scored two goals, could have scored a couple of more and they uh, really put the Rangers under pressure. So I think Celtic will go there tomorrow, put Rangers under pressure and, and Rangers will have to defend properly. They've done it so far, but they're up against better quality and uh, they've got to do it. But I, listen, I, I can't see any... I can't see it being a no-no. I think there's going to be goals in this game, Peter. I really do. Yes, I agree with you on that. Just got this through, Ruffy, which is a list of all uh, the uh, friends of Tam who are Rangers fans. So that's that's quite comprehensive <laughs> there, that list that came through. Wasn't quite sure if there if there were a lot of them, but thankfully Tam has oh, cleared that up, Ruffy. He, he, does have <laughs> he does have Rangers. He does have Rangers. You're saying it, you're saying it as if it's some, something so unusual. Every, everybody has fans from either side and <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, listen, the other raging argument over the last uh, couple of days, and I can't believe it's an argument. I feel, I feel a wee bit sorry for Sky even having to release it, but Stephen Gerrard says he reckons, like Nicola Sturgeon, uh, this game should be free to air on Sky. I, I certainly share their frustration um, because I know how desperate they'll want to watch the team. Um, so it's very difficult, you know, they're getting a lot of instructions and told what to do, but that's very difficult when you've got no access to the game. Um, so I think um, people need to do more for them and maybe, you know, maybe put this game, it is a unique time, we're living in a unique time, so maybe if them instructions are getting given out, maybe give them the game free of charge so they don't have to leave. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Ruffy, but... You know, they're propping up the game at the moment. And yeah. there's no way you give away that game and suddenly everybody else has chipped in their money for the subscription for the season. Suddenly, an A-ban <laughs> game. The best, the game that, let's be honest with you, this is the game that Sky actually Ruffy's, pay for. Uh, Ruffy's got a chipped fire stick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what a chipped fire Sky. stick is. Uh, aye, right. it. I know he, yeah. he thinks that's something to light in the morning. Um, no, I mean, Ruffy, it's a nonsense no, mean, to suggest that the whole I mean, thing is getting free. Yeah, I mean, Neil Doncaster's already been here on the sky, you know, and run it by them and get short drift. So, no, they've paid their money, 150 yeah. million or whatever it is, you know, so why should they, you know, they want people to subscribe. So why should they give it to people the money, the, the picture to people who don't want to subscribe? So... It wouldn't be fair on everybody who does subscribe. So I, I thought it was a non-starter right away. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, um, we write down a list all over the year of Ruffy's catchphrases that he makes up himself. I heard that short, one. <laughs> short, short, short drift <laughs> is even further than short drift. It's, it's more mental than short drift. So, so, so keep that in mind if you're not, it just you're makes not catching up with us here. Drift. Um, but I, I, I'll tell you right now, the the one thing about this game that I do love uh, watching on both sides, and you can pick great games over the uh, the piece where game changers make the difference. Um, players that can make the difference, one of them is Ryan Kent. He's in great form, and that's what he's been saying. I think, you know, there's probably pressure on, on both teams. You know, the fans are obviously wanting them to go and achieve that. Um, you know, our fans are expecting us to stop it, um, you know, so the pressure on both sides. Um, you know, in this picture, it's whoever turns up on the day, um, you know, and with the success that we've had there before, then, um, you know, I think we can go and hopefully get the, get the job done. Um, you know, we're confident on our side. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, Darren, when you consider uh, the League Cup, uh, you know, from my point of view, I thought, uh, you know, that game, when you look back at it, um, Rangers played Celtic off the park. They got the win in the in the league at Celtic Park. Um, so there's every reason that the manager will emphasise to them, look, take those two games in isolation, go and replicate it. That that That's surely his uh, pre-match speech. Yeah, no doubt, Peter. They, they'll be confident. <clears throat> Stephen said there they'll not be overconfident because you can't be going to Celtic Park. You can look at the other way that the losing old film, so that'll be her name. But Rangers will go in there with, with huge confidence, and so will Kent. And I think I think Kent will be a huge player for Rangers tomorrow because if Fringpong's playing, I think they'll target Fringpong's. Def- the, his defending's not the best because he's better going forward, and I think that's where Shane Duffy will play a big part on playing playing the, the, the right side of centre half and being over there and helping him, Peter. So I think that's where they'll they'll pick out a, a danger for for. But he's he's in good form. He's a threat anyway. He scored in an old Firm game. He knows what it's like. Um, and th- this is I was a little bit critical of Ryan Kent last season that I don't think he scores enough goals and he didn't have enough assists. But he started the season really well and he's he's definitely got talent. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a, here's what we think um, might be the starting eleven for Rangers. Ruffy, run your eye over it. Tell us what you think on that one. McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Helen, Barisic. Then it's Jack, Davis, Kamara, uh, Arfield, Kent and Morelos. Well, that's exactly what we've been talking about. I mean, that, that side just picks itself. You know, there's no... I don't think any Rangers supporter will quibble about that selection. Uh, if it was handed in uh, on the day, uh, it's a tried and trusted uh, team uh, and at club level and at European level as well. So... You know, that, that, that's the strength that they've got, if, if that is the solid 11, because most of them have been playing week in, week out, uh, and that's an advantage going into this game. Yeah, Jimmy Miller says, I'll take a 1-0 victory. I'm not in a camp about us winning easy. It would be good to thrash them, but three points is a must for us, Jimmy. Um, uh, Jimmy, with a, a favourite name, um, Miller, um, who was a fantastic player for Rangers. Uh, any kind of win, says to um well, I was going to read out his name there, but I've just realised what it is. Um, quite a few. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite, honestly, it's uh, some people actually need to go to the hospital um, just to see if there's a brain in there. Um, but it, it, there are lots of people saying it's going to be easy for, for Rangers or it's, it's Celtic are going to win. You're going to get your tip for tat on it anyway. Um, but nevertheless, um, Callum Dillery reckons Kent is going to be on fire. Some people suggesting Brown won't be able to wind up the the crowd to get them going on this one. Uh, Stuart Ramsey says 2-1 to Celtic. Um, so lots of people have their opinion on it. Uh, here's a good one for an argument. Darren, cast your eye over this. We got Gabriel. We put Gabriel's name to this because we'd rather he get pelters than any of us <laughs> on it. We've come up with a combined <laughs> Celtic 11. And, and, and of the 11 that Gabriel's put together of Rangers and Celtic players, there's probably only one that we're probably debating. And that's obviously, and I think it'll cause a riot there now, um, but Tavernier in for Frimpong. Other than that, um, you know, possibly the rest of it. McGregor. Fairly, fairly fair. Well, I think, well, McGregor, it's a good shout. I think McGregor's going to be in goal tomorrow because it's the type of game that he loves. Um, so McGregor and Tavernier. Is that fair, Tom? Me. Me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's so fair. I, 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 yeah. That's only two. I, mean, I think McGregor would be, obviously, and uh, we've not seen enough of Barkas. And uh, Frimpong, Tavernier, listen, you take your pick. I think Tavernier's done really, really well for Rangers. Um, he's been flying this season. But Frimpong's a really good young player, both at different stages of their career. But, yeah, that's one you could argue all day, I think. Yeah. Uh, Darren? Um, yeah, both McGregor would go with um, Tavernier, definitely. But I would, Shane Duffy plays on the right. I would have Shane Duffy in before Goldson, and I would, I would have Ayer in before Hellander. But I think everything else for me is about right. 
Yeah, okay. Um, as ever with this, before before you jump in with your prediction, we're going to have to get it now. Um, uh, John Cusick says, to be honest, I think it's going to be a close draw. Hopefully not. Um, Kevin McManus says, Frimpong all day long. Um, and John Shoes wondering where we're going to mention the referee. Well, John, I'm going to set the scene here. We are going to mention the referee, but we're certainly not going to delve into the gutter that some people on this actual feed here are suggesting about John Beaton. I know John, he's a good referee. He's certainly competent enough to handle the madness of an old firm game. And as a professional, I have 100% confidence that he gets out there and does the job to the best of his ability. Like every human, Tam, frailties, mistakes can happen. Yeah, listen, I've never bought into the conspiracy theories of referees, you know, favouring one team <coughs> over the other. I think it's nonsense. You know, we've, we've been professional, we've run the pitch, I've played at Parkhead and Ibrox. I just don't think that they're, they're, they're going out to give teams decisions um, and that they're professional, as you said. They'll go and give the, you know, the best performance that they can, split-second decisions. Listen, they're human, they'll get them wrong sometimes. And, and especially in an old-firm game, it's going to be magnified. But I don't think there's any referee that's ever went out to give decisions for a team. And that's just my opinion. And a lot of people won't agree in your feed because they've got the you know the, the foil foil hats on. But uh, no, not for me. Ruffy? No, people have to realise that these guys are given these games because they are the best referees to, to, to handle these games. And you have to... And every time a referee steps on a, a part in one of these games, he knows he's under the microscope. He knows if, if something goes wrong, he's not maybe not going to get another cup final or a, or a European game or, or whatever. So they're concentrating on the game that it goes smoothly. But for me, these games are all about the players. They're not about the referees. It's how the players handle it. You know, and we've seen it on numerous occasions. It's the players that are causing all the trouble rather than the referee. So he's only there to issue the rules of the game. You know, for me, it's up to the players to behave themselves. Yeah, and uh, Pointer uh, is just basically saying you're losing your respect. If we are losing our respect by keeping a balanced view on professional people, Pointer, I'm glad we're losing our respect with you um, because, quite simply, the referee's going to have to call it as he sees it. And, you know, I don't think the referee is going to have, um, uh, you know, decisions that are going to influence this game because... If anything, I think there's going to be goals, Tom, because the back line's going to influence it because it's not as good as everybody makes out to be. I think the two sets of central defenders are absolutely overrated. Yeah, listen, I think both teams play the push of their fullbacks on. You know, you look at wing backs, probably Celtic, but we've not seen Lax out. I obviously think he'll play. You know, we don't know what kind of player he is, but certainly Frimpong on the right hand side, better going forward. Tavernier. Barisic, when Rangers have got the ball at the back, both of them are on the touchline, you know, pushing up. So there's going to be plenty of spaces in the flanks. You know, Shane Duffy, I think, has been solid. But Kevin Nisbet in the first half at Parkhead caused them all sorts of problems. You know, really bullied them off the ball a couple of times and was unlucky not to score. So, same with Goldson. I don't think he's as good as he make out. Hellander, Jury's still out for me, for him. Ayer. So, yeah, listen, I think, there, I think there'll be plenty of chances. If I was a striker tomorrow, I'd be relishing. You know, I think you'll get an opportunity out of one of them. Um, they might be getting a wee sniff in front of goals. So, nah, I don't think it's going to be an all-nil, Peter. I think there'll be plenty of goals. OK, on that basis, just before you give your predictions, and, and we've we've analysed the Rangers camp, we've analysed the Celtic camp. Look at, look at your faces. Everybody there with just a little grin getting ready for it. I'll give you the last little bits of stats on this because, and I'd like to thank everyone um, for posting what they think is going to happen about this one. Um, you know, you know, the scoreline, who's going to win it, who's going to be the match winner, thanks to the thousands and thousands of people posting them. Celtic are 13 to 8, you can get with most bookmakers. The draw is 5 to 2. The away win uh, for Rangers is 7 to 4. You'll get first goal scorers. I'll give you three options on this, guys. Um, Morelis, 9 to 2. Kent, 7 to 1. Uh, Barisic is 28 to 1. Free kick. That's all I'm saying to you guys. Um, Eduard, 4 to 1. A Yeti, 4 to 1. Duffy, Corner kick, 14 to 1. Um, and both teams, I think that's a stick on. Um, so there's the odds on it, guys. Um, Tam, Ruffy's the expert. You go first? Yeah, Ruffy, you go <laughs> yeah, first. Yeah, no, Ruffy, there you go, Ruffy. Ruffy, yeah, Ruffy, Ruffy go I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go 5 to 2, the draw, and Duffy, first goal scorer at 14 to 1. 
Well, there you are. He's giving us that. And remember, by the way, I always say gamble responsibly. It's a couple of cards here and there, you know. From a man who put 50 pens on Aldeniti in the Grand National. <laughs> Darren, Darren, give us your insights. I'm going with Ruffy. I'm going 2-1, Peter. 2-1 Celtic and Duffy first goal. Okay. Um, any reason why you're swaying that way? Back it up. 2-1 Celtic. Well, yeah. Well, I heard you speaking earlier about how confident Rangers are, and they must be confident without doubt. They've not been conceding goals. They've been playing. They've been playing very, very well. Celtic are a point behind them, their game in hand. So Celtic must be confident as well. Saying it's a, a, a an even playing field, I'd rather be playing at home. I'd, whether there's a crowd or not, I'd rather be at Cel Celtic Park. So they're comfortable with the surroundings, and I, th I think they're a better side. That's why I think they're one two one. Okay, that's fine. That's you've backed it up. Um, Ruffy's gone for the draw. Tam? <sighs> I'm going to go for the draw as well, Peter. Um, listen, I, I was swaying towards Rangers. I was swaying towards Rangers this week. Um, listen, I've seen both of them against Hibs this season, and I, I just feel Rangers are slightly the better side. But I just think that Celtic will dig out a draw tomorrow. I think they're hard to beat their champions for a reason. You know, they've got the bottle in the big games. And I think they'll leak out a draw. I think it'll be two each. I think it'll be a good game. Um, both teams going at it. First goal scorer, uh, I'll go for Ryan Kent. Ryan Kent. Okay. Um, so a draw for uh, Ruffy and Tam um, because obviously it's uh, it's one of those ones where lots of people Celtic to win 2-1 Duffy to score says Thomas McGee uh, Tam on the fence again says Gary McGurn um, and Kenny Campbell <laughs> says uh, what a day for Morelos to score with no fans there to see it um, well listen he's, he, he's going to have to score at some point he gets sent off for is celebrating he going to score <laughs> yeah well, well uh, t to be fair if he scored the goal for me just <laughs> to win and get sent off for celebrating <laughs> yeah. they'd, they'd, be more, they'd be more than happy happy. Uh, Rangers 2-1 says Fiona Doherty. Fiona listens and watches the show on a regular basis. Fiona, thank you uh, again for supporting us. 2-1 Kent to score first. 1-0 um, to Rangers for me says Niall Kane. Um, Frimpong first goal says John Mullaney. 3-0 Celtic. Um, and, and I think Barisic 28-1. Worth a punt says Callum Dillery. So as you can see, you know, there's three of us uh, so far have given the prediction. Last night, I said on the show that I thought Celtic would win the game 2-1. Um, the reasons I've gone for Celtic to win it is because I I'm only trying to look at the facts. I think the one thing in Rangers' favour is the fact that they can go there knowing that they have, when they get in Celtic's faces, been able to actually force the issue. And Kent could be a match winner um, if he's got it about himself to go and take players on. But the reason why I think this Celtic side will win. I think they've got more options. I think they've got stronger options from the bench. And the other key issue here, quite simply, is this is nine of that Rangers side that collapsed from January of last year. And the only two players I'm looking at that are coming in are Arfield and Hellander. And I think man for man, Celtic are a better side on the Park 11 and the subs bench as well, which is why I've gone for them to win 2-1. Um, I could be I could be wrong. Darren could be wrong. Tam and Ruffy and lots of people who are mentioning here um, all the scores on it, and I'm sure we'll all get it in the neck. In fact, John McConaughey says, "Peter, wake up, son," which is brilliant because that's the nature of the game. What I would say to you is this: enjoy it. It's only a game of football. It's not life or death. Don't go near the park. Follow the rules. Stay in your house. Stay safe. It's as simple as that, and enjoy the game. Um, and of course, the other thing, which I think what time is very important tomorrow? to mention. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the other great thing about it, Alan. And, it, and it's not the Stonescape either. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, we're, we're actually out live at 11 o'clock. We'll be outside Celtic Park, uh, ready to give uh, the big build-up. Um, yeah, because, listen, the other thing, which I think is a pertinent uh, message on this one, is quite simply... This game, sadly, Ruffy, has got some chilling statistics around domestic violence as well. So I think, you know, as well as paying heed to the COVID information, people need to put it into perspective. It is only a game of football. It, you know, it's it's for us, it's a joy because, you know, we, we get paid to talk about it. But when I go home, it shouldn't matter. People should just look at it. They might get angry because their favourite team's lost. Other than that, that's where it should end, full stop. Yeah, I think we'd all agree with that. I think the police would agree with that as well. I think most of the hospitals would agree with that as well. You know, that uh, 
the time they have after this game uh, as you hear some horrible, horrible stories. So let's hope it might be different. Obviously, we know crowd at the game. Uh, it might relieve them with some of the pressure that they're under. But you're right, everybody has to act responsible in this, this everything that's happening in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to uh, countless people who are giving us their uh, odds on it all. Some people arguing with, uh, you know, our debate over who's got the best players, who's the best team in previous games. You could go on and on, but the joy of it is I'm so delighted that lots of people uh, are mentioning the fact of violence. We don't want to see it. Um, hatred and certainly some of the abuse. That's the last thing you want to see in this. Watch the game by all means. Uh, and at the end of it, you might be happy, you might not. might be a draw. We might get to the point where we're back on at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, bringing you the manager's reactions, and it's been a damp squib. I have to say, though, as Joe Mercer, who was a, an old Manchester City manager, uh, said many, many years ago when they asked him, Joe, what makes a great game of football? And he said, two rank rotten defences. And boy... I think we're in for a goal fest tomorrow. Uh, anyway, on that note, um, you're up there at Dingwall. We're going to talk about that in a moment as well, Tam. But the other game, which I think is an absolute belter, Ruffy, and I'm building it up from days of uh, old, Dundee United against Aberdeen, the new firm derby. Yeah, I think Aberdeen beginning to get their act together. Uh, and it's the reverse for Dundee United. You know, poor result against Peterhead and not a very convincing one against Kelty. So they'll begin up there. Not with a lot of confidence. Uh, we don't even know if Shanklin's going to be back in the, the team. So for me, it's an Aberdeen win for me. I, I can't see Dundee United scoring at all. I'm going to go Aberdeen 2-0. Wow, straight in there. And do you know why I'm looking, Ruffy? I'm looking here to see if that is indeed your prediction here. I, I just double check him. And, uh, yeah, I'm just checking him uh, because, he, he, well, he has said 2 nothing to be fair to him, uh, Tom. And, and, and I'm looking at it myself, and I think Aberdeen 2-1. Um, I just think they've got more, I think they've got more match winners. And Dundee United, for me, are finding, just finding it a little bit tough at the moment, Tom, life in the Premiership. Yeah, yeah, I think they are. And I, I, I think Dundee United should be doing better, you know, and I don't know if the guys will agree. I think their budget will be top six. Well, they've spent some decent money. Dundee United, the guys have brought in from down south, big contract for Shankland. So I think they were a little bit disappointed with they started. They'll be looking for a top six finish. I think if they're in the bottom three, that's a poor season for Dundee United, to be perfectly honest. So I don't see them getting into Pataudra either. I agree with Ruffy. I think it'll be. I think I put down 2-0 as well. I think Aberdeen will be too strong. Darren? Is that Pataudra? Yeah. No, it's a Tanner Dice. Tanner Dice. Yeah. Listen, I, I fancy yeah. Aberdeen. I think the two results have had Peter Head, and I don't think Dundee United are strong. Mm. I think it will be better with McNil whether McNulty goes right in with McNulty and Shanklins, because I think Shanklins needs someone up there with him. I think McNulty holds the ball in better, links the play better, and um, they will. <laughs> but I think Aberdeen will be way too strong for them. I'm going to go three one Aberdeen. Yeah, OK. So quite emphatic, we're all there for Aberdeen. I'm going to read out this one. I'm going to read out this message because it's well worth mentioning as I put this hat on of safety for everybody. Andy Wilson, it's only a joke, folks. Andy is a Rangers fan from Australia and he just said, Peter, am I allowed to kick my dog if Rangers get beaten? Well, the first thing that I am amazed at, Andy, is you've bought a dog that supports Celtic. That is incredible. I mean, I just don't believe that for a minute. And, <laughs> and, and I wonder... <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if, uh, if, if, Rage, if Celtic get beaten, is the dog allowed to bite Andy Ruffy? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a two-way street here, isn't it? Um, anyway, don't kick the dog, Andy. Oh, that's all I'm saying to you. Don't kick the dog. Enjoy the game, and hopefully the dog enjoys the game as well. Um, you're up there at Dingwall, Tam. Oh, no, no, you're not. Apparently mm -hmm. the funds are starting to get rained in now. You're, you're there at Easter Road <laughs> watching the game at Dingwall because you, you don't want to get an overnight, do you? <laughs> the old, the old oh no! Has that, been dragged in. That that was the that, that was the money that the Hibs have spent in transfers. It, it's, they're, they're running out of dough. Um, no, but listen, I've I've seen Hibs in the, in the League Cup and they've, they've been poor. I'll be perfectly honest; they've been really poor. Brora Rangers, Cove Rangers, and then four for the other night. They, they've scraped three wins, to be honest. Um, I think obviously they've been a lot stronger. Gogic coming back in, you know, Portis coming back in. You know, the guys have been international duty. Marciano and guys like that. So I think they'll be a lot stronger. I think it'll be a really hard game, Ross County. I, I don't know. They're a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. They're, they're, 
you know, sometimes I think they look quite good, and then other times they're poor, and Aberdeen went up there and battered them. So I think Hibs will go up and win the game. I, th I think I put down 2-1 to Hibs. I think Hibs will just edge it, and Nisbet's in fire. Yeah, you love Nisbet, by the way. I mean, honestly, if if, he, if 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 COVID ends and Nisbet is living in a flat and he asks you to move in, you'd move in, by the way. You are in a love fest <laughs> with him at the moment. It's Nisbet for Scotland. It's Nisbet for everything. Um, although, to be fair, Dan, he is playing well. Yeah, he's, he's, he's scored goals. Um, I think it'll be a hard game. Hibs, as Tam said, Hibs have scraped through the, 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 the League Cup, but they've won, so that, breed, that breeds confidence. They will change the team, there's no doubt about that they'll change the team, but I still think Ross County is always a hard place to go up to. Um, they got a good result uh, during the week, they'll, they'll, they'll be high, they've got goal scorers in their team, so I'm going to go 1-0. Yeah, I've got 2 nothing to the Hibbies. Ruffy, what have you got? I've got a Hibs win as well. I can't off the top of my head remember what it was. Uh, but you've got it there down yeah. there anyway. No, Please, me, can you check that, Peter? Ross, Ross yeah, County. Yeah, it's 2-1. 2, one, two one Hibs. 2-1. Two one. Ross County are there to be beaten and uh, they will be beaten oh. tomorrow. How much does he hate Ross County? Ross County hates Ross County. Oh, no. That's unbelievable. And see, and can I tell you something? See when we're up there and Roy <laughs> McGregor, the chairman comes out. Oh, nice as nice Aye. as all, Roy. It's great to see you. You know, oh, yeah, typical two-faced. Uh, exactly, and look at him, by the way. You're not sitting on the fence with the Ross County Hibs scoreline, are you? Two-one to Hibs. Um, listen, the other part, uh, St Mirren against Mullow. The reason I mentioned St Mirren against Mullow, St Mirren, you know, three players that, that they're not going to be able to select for this one, and. Uh, the key to all this is I was out there at Motherwell having a chat to Stephen Robinson uh, today as well to get his thought on it. Um, and, and first and foremost, I think this is an interesting part um, from Stephen Robinson. He reckons that because they are contributing, and great credit to Motherwell, they're contributing more and more players to international football. Uh, Stephen Robinson says he reckons players and the team should be given an extra day to recover. This game maybe should have been played on the Sunday. Need perhaps a little bit more help from the authorities that, and maybe use their brain, which would be great if we can you know, move the game for another 24 hours. We give everybody um, a little bit more breathing space and, and time to recover. It's a long time since I've heard a Motherwell manager say that, Darren, and that's great credit to them. Look at them, <laughs> the players they've got an international duty. It has, you know, I've banged on about Robbo and the job he's done. I think, again, I think he, he could have been interviewed for Hibs and Hearts. I think he's done a wonderful job there, and uh, they'll be confident. I think he's, uh, he's got a point there, when you've got players away, but all the clubs have got players away. I think if you just moved it, it does help them because if I've, I've had three games, I saw, I saw uh, Mark Warburton talking about uh, Lyndon Dykes. He's played the three games and he's got to go back and uh, perform for QPR, so it is very hard. But uh, Robbo's done a great job, and I think was their last was their last game the three 0 win at Aberdeen, Peter. Their last game, no, they lost 5-1 to Rangers. That was about the, the, the game before. Um, so, yeah. but they'll, 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 try and, they'll try and not be too down for the Rangers result. Obviously, Robbo, they'll look at the, they'll look at the performance, they'll look at the, the video where they've made mistakes, but I think, he's, I think he's done a great job there. Yeah, big fan of Robinson, Tam. Yeah, agree with, agree with Jacko there. I think he's been brilliant. Um, obviously, they've had a slow start to the season, but I just look at the squad they've built. A really, really strong squad on paper. They've got new, good young <coughs> players. Barry Maguire, centre-back, played for Scotland 21s. Alan Campbell, um, obviously Adorno and Gallagher. You know, so they've got guys playing at a good level, uh, international duty. And, uh, you know, so I, I think he's done a great job. I think they'll, go, they'll start flying up the table. I think they're a really good squad. I think they'll beat St Mern as well. I think they'll win 2-1, I think. I put it down. Yeah, I think they'll win. Stuart Carruthers makes a great point. Well, worried about the middle defence uh, due to Bevis Mugabe being out. He's out for four to six weeks, which is a blow. He was actually starting just to get used to the rigours of Scottish football and they look good. Um, what have you gone for? On you Go for a middle win, Darren, as well, yeah? Go for a middle win. I'll go 2 0. Yeah. Ruffy? Uh, I'm going for a as well. Uh, wasn't impressed with St. Martin at all. We hammered them for 75 minutes last week. <laughs> oh, he's one. still going on a minute. <laughs> uh, so if they play the way they played against us for 75 minutes, I'm sure Motherwell will win this game pretty easily. Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, okay, then. Uh, 
he's unbelievable. Hamilton against uh, St Johnston is uh, one of the other matches. Aki's 10, Ooh. one win in the last five games. Uh, and of course, St Johnston, bottom of the table. Uh, although I have to say, and I'm not sucking up to Callum Davis in any way, uh, I watched them play against Celtic. I thought they played some really good football, Tom. Yes, I think that I think they've they've been not been far away from getting results. Um, I think they obviously they beat Breakin. I think seven seven one or seven 0 I think Stevie May got a hat trick, so I think that might kick him on. I think they're desperate for a goal scorer. Stevie May might get confidence from that. They're they're usually pretty solid at the back. They don't give many goals away, so I think they'll win that game. I think they'll win one nothing. I think I put one nothing down to the Saints. Okay, I've got a draw, Darren. What have you got? Oh, listen, I think you're right, Peter. I've watched them twice. I think they were the better team against Hibs. They should have, they should have beaten Hibs. And then against Celtic, they were very and did really well. And you know that can happen against Celtic because they keep coming at you and there's a lot, the game goes longer. They, you go deeper and deeper. So you give other you give teams like Celtic or Rangers a chance. Um, but I think they've performed well in the two games I've watched. And Hamilton have kind of struggled. I'll go, I'll go 1-0 um, St. Johnson. Ruffy? No, I'm going to say Johnson win. I uh, agree that big win they had against Breaking will, will give a lot of confidence in the camp. I think they'll it'll turn for them now. Uh, I think they've got a run of games with the teams that are down at the bottom six. So I think a win tomorrow will just kickstart their season. Peter, yeah, I, I heard um, that Breaking were the better side for, for 75 minutes in that game. Um, we're unlucky to and then lost seven goals. Yeah, seven yeah. so it's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's a good point you make, Tom. A lot of, lot of free, lot of free flowing football there. Brilliant stuff. Like, <laughs> bah, they're playing like Barcelona, and then those freak seven goals. A couple of them could have been ruled out by VAR. You're right, Tom. Um, Livingston against Kilmarnock. I laughed actually listening to Gabriel's report when he was previewing Livingston against Kilmarnock and he says the, game, the games that the spaghetti had <laughs> I didn't know that they'd actually come up with a up with a name for the Tony Macaroni Stadium but anyway I've got Livingston uh, in this one to lose one nothing to Kilmarnock I'm, I like what Kilmarnock are doing Tommy you disagree with me I think I, I don't know I'm not sure I think I maybe put a draw down for that as Kilmarnock not missing quite yeah. a lot of players are they still struggling with Covid I know they had young boys out during no. the week so depends what, what yeah. Kilmarnock's got out to be honest you've got it down as a draw did I alright yeah. a draw down Darren yeah <laughs> I'll go for a draw yeah. as well because the Kilmarnock boys are, are coming back obviously they've, they've no trained they've been self-isolating and all that so I'll go for, I'll go 1-0 um, Peter Ruffy? I've went for Livingston, uh, basically because of all yep. the problems, obviously, Kilmarnock have got. Uh, I don't know the definitive of their lineup, so um, Livingston win for me. OK, I'm going to let you hear from uh, another Mullow, a Motherwell player, and because earlier today they rolled out Declan Gallagher. What a fantastic uh, week it was. And In fact, I'm just getting a bit here from our journalist Cheryl, who says all Kilmarnock players were tested ahead of the Livingston game tomorrow, and there's no issues with all the players now cleared to play. Alex Dyer will assess the squad overnight in terms of fitness and niggling injuries due to a lack of training. So, they're all available, which is good news. Um, I'm going to let you hear what Declan Gallard had to say, because he's in a fantastic week. Um, a fantastic three games for Scotland. He's unbeaten in the five internationals he's played. And he reckons, the way things are going, the players that are playing, uh, the way our game's going, he reckons that fans, Scotland fans, Scottish fans, should you know start to talk up our game. No, I think uh, the Scottish fans need to start backing our league a wee bit more because we showed our night we played against uh, Czech Republic's main team and beat them 1-0, regardless of how the performance was at Inton. And the day we've won our last eight games, I think it is now unbeaten. So we have to take a lot of pride for that. Yeah, time to talk it up, Rafi. Yeah, yeah, I think positive results. You know, I still think performances could be better over the 90 minutes. Uh, but they've won the games, clean sheets is what it's all about. Again, I would like to see us scoring more goals. Uh, one goal a game uh, isn't going to win games against the bigger sides. But no, let's get right behind them. Let, let's support them all the way. Serbia seem to be stuttering a wee bit, you know. And let's hope they continue to stutter until we play them on the 10th of November. 
Yeah, absolutely, Ruffy. Monday started off mumping and moaning and groaning, and now at the end of the week, Ruffy, suddenly there's a ray of light <coughs> just shone in, uh, and that's possibly because the cleaner has now opened the curtains in the house. So um, Scott Caracas says, what have I missed? Are they all saying a Celtic win? How long? I mean, Scott, this is not the time to join the programme at the tail end of it, the, the start of it, we were all arguing with each other. And uh, some of the <laughs> messages on here about who's going to win uh, the... Uh, Can I believe Ruffy said 3-0 to Rangers as well? Incredible. Well, it's absolutely, it's incredible. Scott, you I'll missed that. that it's later. unbelievable. Uh, Gary McGurn says, Peters, uh, can you give us a score for Nasey against Charlie tonight? And I'm glad you said that, Gary, because at the start of the championship, I'm going through to Tynecastle. Um, I've obviously paid my season ticket to Anne. I've made sure the money went straight through into her account. I'm happy to let some of the games go into next season's money, as she's suggesting, Tam. She's suggesting if you can't get to all the home games, you know, maybe move your season ticket into next year. I've said, that's fine, Anne. Wait, more checks, I'll send them through to you. I follow up this bit, you love Van Budge. Oh, that's absolutely sensational. How much you suck up? I am, <laughs> am going for the I, Jambos to win. I'm going for yeah. Charlie Adam to get well and truly pumped tonight. Yeah. I, I could have I could have gave you my season ticket. Well, for Hearts? Uh, it's a joint it's a joint right. it's a joint party <laughs> thistle hearts. It's one. a joint it's a joint venture <laughs> with just swaps season tickets. They've just played each other twenty five times. <laughs> I know, I keep forgetting, Ruffy, you're totally in their camp at the moment. I, actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because, uh, uh, you know, if ever you needed a spread betting on how many diagonals Charlie's going to attempt in this game, it's this game tonight, and Nasey will be his usual boy. He'll go into the park, tell the referee that he makes all the decisions and not the ref, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, I said to Nasey, and I shouldn't have said it to him last night, I wish I hadn't have said it, uh, I've got you down in the spread betting to get booked <laughs> inside 12 minutes. <laughs> I hope that doesn't influence him. I don't gamble. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, I think Hearts will win. Tom? Uh, yeah, I think they will just edge it. I don't, listen, I've not seen them. I've not seen a lot of them. Uh, they've obviously had a couple of victories against Inverness and Wraith Rovers. They've had I think, three penalty kicks. So, Dundee, don't know what to expect really from Dundee. I think they've got a good squad in paper, but a difficult game. You go down to Tynecastle. So, listen, I'm going to let my, my heart roll my head and I'm going to go for uh, Dundee 3, Hearts now. What? <laughs> Three nothing for Dundee. Yeah, I think Dundee Castle. will turn them over. Yeah, Dundee will turn them over. I think. <laughs> Look at his face. He's <laughs> keeping a straight face. I didn't. Uh, I actually didn't uh, hear. I thought the pubs were only selling drinks. <laughs> exactly. It's unbelievable. That's magnificent. Uh, another thing is Sean Grogan. I think has got a very good point, Ruffy, which is very pertinent to yourself. Sean Gr Grogan has said Dundee want to win this game, but they may change their minds. <laughs> Yeah, that's obviously. I think they're very fortunate that there are no fans in the stadium tonight. Have you left the WhatsApp sure chat yet, Ruffy? I'm sure there'll be a lot of banter going on uh, in this. But uh, no, I, I have seen Hearts quite a lot this year, and uh, I think they're, they're pretty impressive. They move the ball about uh, very good. If Nasey's back and Boyce is back and some of the other boys that haven't been there, no, I'm I'm going to go Hearts two nothing here. Yeah, I like Dan. Uh, Dan Jimmy uh, has said, "Why don't you gamble, uh, sacred or previous out of control problem?" <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, the, re the, re the reason I don't gamble, quite simply, is when you work that hard during the week. The last thing I want to do is give it away to somebody, uh, you know, in a situation which is based on chance. I just don't fancy it. Um, Darren, uh, who are you going for? Well, I've, I've obviously got to go for hard, Peter, because I've said. Um, I've not said they will go. I said that they could go unbeaten. Um, but I just think the forward line with Boyce, White and Nasey, Jamie Walker, I just think there'll be too much for Dundee. I think there'll be too much for a lot of teams. Um, so I'm going Hearts 2-0. Yeah, OK. Um, Darren Phil Thompson says, 4 nothing to Dundee. Colin Moy says, Tam, stick to advertising water, mate. Your predictions are mince. So there you are. Everybody takes it in the A jam both by a sim. Yeah, exactly. Um, listen, great to see the championship back. Dunfermline against Inverness, Morton, Alloa, Air United, Queen of the South, Wraith Rovers against our both. I think Hearts will win the league. They're my tip to win the league. Uh, simple as Ooh. that with Dundee, with Dundee finishing there. a close second. Yep. Uh, what are you going for to win the league championship? Hearts. Darren? 
Well, I've said the night go unbeaten, Peter, so I think I'll probably go for Hearts. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. You can, you, you can, you can, you, you can change it on the WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> they might get yep. 27 uh, goals, I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll give you the top four. <laughs> hearts, Hearts, Dunfermline, Dundee and Inverness. Head and wow, shoulders above like everybody that. else. He's okay, us a, you heard it there first. The four. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, good luck to the girls um, who are back. Um, ladies football is back this week in the, in the Scottish Women's Premier League kickoff. And the reason I mention it is because I think in the, it, all the fixation and the news and, and the furore over what's been happening over the last six months in the men's game, the women's game was shut down effectively. And now, only now, is it managing to get back in there. And the fixtures fought for Motherwell, Hibs, Spartans, Rangers, Hearts and Glasgow City against Celtic. I wish them the very best because, uh, you know, if the men's game needs money and help, then the women's game equally so, uh, so that it can prosper in this country. Um, so uh, good luck to everybody. Uh, the game's going to be live on BBC as well, which is great. Uh, it gives them the platform uh, to show exactly what they can do. There's a small matter of me being a Liverpool fan and at 12.30 as well, it's Everton Liverpool and I'm tipping Liverpool, despite Ancelotti's start, I'm tipping Liverpool to win the Merseyside derby, Tam. Yeah, it'll be a great game. Um, listen, Everton are flying. You know, their, their fans are thinking it could be the first league title in a long, long time. Liverpool absolutely smashed against Arsene Villa. Hopefully they've been working and defending and training since then. Uh, but I, I think Everton will beat them. I'll go for Everton. Yeah. Darren? I've got to go for Liverpool. Um, it's a one-off. They just had a bad game. When you look at the players they've got, I'm going. I'm actually going to go 2-0 Liverpool. Ruffy? Oh, I'm going to agree with Tam. I think Everton are flying just now in the confidence they've yeah. got. I'm going to go for a narrow Everton win. Yep, okay. Uh, it's yep. all about opinions on this show. Um, just before we go, um, remember, stay safe, stay in the house, watch the game, don't do anything daft, uh, support your team. And remember, it's only a sport. It's only something that we do for recreation and we love it and we're passionate about it. We've been brought up in our families to enjoy it. We've been brought up uh, in this game to actually talk about it on a professional level. Um, some points we make you disagree with, some you agree with. That's the joy of football, especially in this country. And just to give you a little appetizer for it, um, I'm also going to throw in a chance for you to win something because if you like, share and follow us on Facebook and if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you're in with a chance of winning something. You could win all these fantastic prizes by entering our competition. If you like what you see, you can share it with your friends and you can follow us for all the latest breaking football news. Join the football family at PLZ Soccer on Facebook and you could win all these fantastic prizes. It's a very simple process. An iPad, some great classic uh, Hall of Fame prints, uh, Maradona and Pele t-shirt, and the iPad thrown in there as well. Absolutely fantastic. Good luck with that. We're going to be picking up, uh, picking out a winner uh, next week on that one. It's a simple process to enter it. And the other uh, great piece of news uh, on this whole thing is, uh, of course, uh, tomorrow we've got a special show. Uh, let's hear what it's all about. Join the football family with PLZ Soccer for Saturday's first Old Firm game of the season, where myself, Peter Martin and Darren Jackson will bring you all the build-up from 11am live outside Celtic Park. We'll hear from Neil Lennon, Stephen Gerrard, players from both teams and much more before being back at the full-time whistle to break down the result. We'll analyse the game, hear from both managers again and also read out all of your thoughts and questions. It's live on PLZ Soccer's Facebook, YouTube and Twitter channels from 11am. Really looking forward to looking down on the ground. Darren will be there, Ruffy will be there, and of course uh, I'll be there alongside Gabriel Antoniazzi. We're looking forward to the big build-up to it. 11 o'clock on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook as well. Hopefully you can join us for that and don't forget to enter our competition. All that remains for me to say is enjoy your football over the weekend, uh, follow the rules, and uh, we will dissect the aftermath of the Old Firm game. Also at 3 o'clock we'll be back on live tomorrow as well to bring you the reaction 
reaction from the managers and players as well. So from Ruffy, from Darren, Tam and myself, Peter Martin, to you, thank you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit 